Hi everyone, welcome back to Rose Modeling with Art of Lisa. I hope that you have all been well out there and I apologize for my long hiatus. Um, but you know, this morning I wanted to spend a little time and uh, do a little rose modeling with you. For those who have never been with me before, my name is Lisa. I am a rose modeler. It's a Norwegian art form that goes back to the 1600s. I like to say I don't go back to the 1600s, um, but it's a wonderful art form that I've been doing for a long time and I love to share it. So here you can see I have some lovely little fjord horses, all right, that I am working on right now. And I think you can kind of see the stroke work. Stroke work is really very important in rose modeling. It's what everything is based on. And in rose modeling, we use C strokes and S strokes. So what I'm going to do today is practice a little bit of our stroke work here with a round brush. And then uh, perhaps we can get some strokes on this little guy right here. You can see I'm working on three of them. Let's put that aside. So I use acrylic paint. You can see I have my wet palette all set up here. And I have my medium uh, as well. I will put the colors that I'm going to use as well as my medium combination in the notes below. Today I'm using a number three Joe Sonia Short Touch round brush. I particularly like to work with round brushes. Um, I do a lot of classes working with teaching people how to use their tool, which is your brush, and working with rounds and flats and detail brushes. But today we're going to use round. And I'm going to practice a little bit first. I have just some paper here ready to go. I've got my paint and uh, let's just go ahead and go into my dark blue here. And I'm adding some medium to my brush and to my paint so that my paint will flow on the paper. Uh, the paper sucks up your paint quite quickly, much like um, when you're painting a wall, a drywall, uh, and the paint goes on there and it gets sucked right in. So I like to say practicing is super, super important with rose modeling. So let's practice some C strokes here to start with. So I've got my round brush. I'm going to go ahead and lay my brush down here and I'm going to pull some left to right strokes here. So I'm going to push my bristles down, spreading them out. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull these bristles, pull this brush behind me pulling it up almost like around a clock here. And when I'm pulling, I am rolling my brush ever so slightly down my thumb to drag or redirect the direction of my bristles. Because notice I'm pulling it behind me. So I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna push down, pull those bristles behind me. But what I'm also doing is taking pressure off my bristles, meaning I'm slowly raising the brush up so that the bristles come together and thin out so we get this nice thick to thin motion here. So let's go ahead, add a little bit more medium and paint to my brush. Oftentimes when I'm teaching classes, I actually add my medium to the paint and get it nice and loose so that it works quite nicely on the paper. Um, after you practice quite a while, then you can see how you can add the medium to the brush. Well, let's do that again. And don't worry about whether they're super round or if they're long or if they're short. This is all about just practicing those brush strokes. Notice I push those bristles down so that they really spread out. I almost go down to the middle portion here. And then I'm going to go ahead and start pulling my brush up around very slight motion of rolling down my thumb. If you're right-handed moving in the left to right direction, you're going to roll down your thumb. If you're left-handed, you're going to roll up your thumb. Now, if you notice, I am using my opposing arm to help brace my hand so that I'm up a little higher with my brush. And I'm also not holding my brush all the way down at the bottom. If I hold my brush down at the bottom, well, then it's like a T-Rex. I can't go very far, right, with their arms when I hold the brush back further 
on the handle and when I use my arm to help raise myself up, I have much more reach than I would otherwise. Well, let's do a few more of these. So let me go ahead and push these down. I do have some other videos out there in my channel that do extra stroke work here. Stroke work, the more time you spend practicing, the better. Oh, look at that. I'm going to throw a little sister stroke in there, a little smaller. Well, I'll talk about that in just one second. The It's very nice to spend some time warming up and giving your hands some time to get used to the movement with the brush. Practice is very important. This is about muscle memory. The more you do something, the more comfortable it becomes and the easier it becomes as you work with this. So notice I'm doing a few here. Now these C strokes, they also have little sisters in there. I like to call them smaller strokes. Very rarely do you see these strokes standing alone. You almost always have smaller strokes that come inside. Okay. Remember this art form, or I should say for those that aren't familiar, these are based on flowers. They're flower forms. You're coming down to the root. When you look at your flowers in the garden, you know that there's multiple, multiple uh, stems and, and shapes that are coming out. So let's do this again. Inside here, it's not quite a, as heavy a, a push. It's You're still pushing down to spread those bristles about. And it's not quite as directed, pulled around like your first stroke here. And these are your main C strokes. But a little less formed, a little smaller. It's a supporting root and it comes right down to that root right there. As I throw my brush at me and it goes flying to the floor. Let me get it. Okay, excitement at my, my table here. And you'll notice as a um, <laughs> videographer with these, I what you see is what you get. All right, so let's do another one with that. And then we're just going to change directions here, okay? Again, practice, practice, practice. I love teaching classes like this. Um, and if you're ever interested, just message me or, you know, you can look at rosemalingclasses.com. R-O-S-E-M-A-L-I-N-G classes.com and they have classes for myself as well as many other people out there that are wonderful to work with. All right, changing directions. Well, now we're moving in the opposite direction. If we roll down our thumb going from left to right, we're going to roll up our thumb for right to left. Again, left-handed will be the opposite. So I'm going to go ahead and push those bristles down start pulling them up. I'm rolling ever so slightly up my thumb to help change the directions. It's kind of like when you're driving the car and you have to do a very subtle motion on your steering wheel to get that turn, to get that to come about here. All right, we're going to go ahead and push down again. Same with your little sister. Push down and pull around. We're going to try that one more time, or well, maybe two or three more times here. Let's just push those bristles down. Again, I push the bristles down. Notice they're facing towards me, okay? All right? If I'm at a clock, maybe the bristles are facing towards about, oh, if six is here, it's facing maybe seven, right? I'm going to push down, and then I'm going to go ahead and push. Pull those bristles up, and you can notice I'm rolling ever so slightly up my thumb, pulling this around, taking the pressure off. Again, what do I mean by taking the pressure off? It means I'm lifting ever so slightly. Make sure I'm still in screen here so you can see what's going on. I'm lifting ever so slowly in order for my bristles to come together. And as they come together, it gets thinner and then it just takes off and rolls away. Let me do that again here. I'm gonna go ahead and push down, spread those bristles apart, pull up, 
and then pull around. C's are your main scrolls that you do. S's are your secondary strokes. Just as important, but, but they don't play as the featured actor. By the way, your C strokes, these nice big rounded C strokes actually even become smaller strokes. For example, notice they almost look like a comma. I'm pushing down and pulling in. These are still considered C strokes. Those would be like petals in a flower. You can even do from thin to thick. Push down. Okay. Push down. These are still considered C strokes. Again, not quite as rounded. All right, a little S stroke fun here. So S strokes, again, are your secondary strokes. They make up your leaf shapes. They're um, uh, supporting actors, as I said before. So an S stroke is a thin, thick, thin motion, almost like a Z. If I took a Z and I went thin, thick, thin. Now I'm not twisting or turning here, but what I'm doing is to give the practice of going from thin, thick, thin. Can you see the S? It's a backwards S, but it is an S and I'm going left to right here. So an S, thin, thick, thin. Now this is a thin stroke here, right? Well, typically when you have leaf shapes, and I can do this sideways as well, thin, thick, thin, they will have a secondary stroke to this. All right, so your secondary stroke, thin, thick, thin, will start in the same spot as your first stroke. But it will come, and I'll just demonstrate on the outside of this, We'll come a little further out and we'll end sooner and then we'll tuck in. Well, let me show that together. So you have your first stroke, thin, thick, thin. Okay. Again, notice the pressure. It's like an airplane coming in for a landing and then taking off again. And then you have your secondary stroke that starts in the same place, comes a little to the side of it bumps out and then comes back in. Now I have a little gap there, but that's okay. Because typically you have a little line, so you're just gonna reverse your strokes and pull back in. And look at that, you have a leaf. Okay, let me show that again. So you have a thin, thick, thin. And then you have a secondary stroke. Thin, thick, and then in. Look at that, all right? We can do this in the opposite direction. Again, think of a Z. This is a reverse Z. Well, that, I don't like that one. We'll take that one out. That wasn't nice and thick. I am, by the way, reloading my brush pretty consistently off to the side, okay? Just as needed. I'm just not pulling it on the screen every time I do it. Let's go ahead and do this again. We're going to do a thin, thick, Thin. And again, the reason I do this is just to give the practice, practice of having that light touch, heavy touch, light touch. So let's go ahead and do that again. Thin, thick, thin, right? Now what you can do is round off your edges and start going. And again, I'm using my brace here, I'm using my hand. Let me just come back a little bit. And center this maybe I'll come over here instead give a little room here so again I'm doing that thin thick thin make sure you can see what I'm doing go at an angle all right let me do that again reaching out a bit coming down for a landing thin thick thin well, let's go ahead. Now these can be sideways, they can be shorter, they can be bigger. The more pressure you add, the bigger the stroke, the less pressure you add, the smaller the stroke. So same brush, 
I can make something very teeny with a little pressure, or I can make something quite large with heavier pressure. That means a little more paint there is getting a little fuzzy. So let's go ahead and add that second stroke in there to make the leaf shape. So you've got a thin, thick, thin. And let's do the second one. Thin, thick, end a little sooner and pull it in and lift up. And notice I'm letting my brush catch up to me so that I don't get what I like to call is a flippy. A flippy is when we get to the end and we're so excited that we get to the end that we're like, Woo! and then it gets this whatever flip to it. So we don't want to flip on these at all. So let's just do that one more time. Here. Thin, thick, and thin. Well, I had thought about doing this fjord horse in the same video, but I think I'm going to save it for a second video because wouldn't it be nice for me to finally come back and do videos and actually have maybe two that come out. So look for a second video with using these strokes. But before I do that, I'm going to come back to one more S stroke here. All right. So sometimes the S strokes have a bit of a rounded end to it. Okay knob much like what you see on your C strokes here. See your knob? Okay. So these have a similar start and I'm going to work from the knob and work down here as what you do with a C stroke. So I'm going to go ahead and put, and I'm going to say, you know, even if you take and do some lines here on your paper. Okay that have this S shape, right? And we'll do in the opposite direction as well. Okay. To give yourself something to practice off of. So this has a similar start as the C stroke. You're pushing down on your knob in your or in, on your bristles to get what you could call a knob. And I'm pulling it around, but instead of keeping and going this way, and I am rolling down my thumb again, right? There's that roll down the thumb. Let me just come back just a teeny bit here. Roll down your thumb to get it to pull around. But now what I'm going to do is take the pressure off. And it's like I'm going down a curvy road. Now these strokes, and that's a very rounded knob that I have here. But these strokes you have to realize comes off of a C. Normally there's a C in here, okay? So just imagine there's a C that these S strokes come off of. Now you don't necessarily have to have such a big knob there. You can simply lay those bristles down. They're facing about nine o'clock right now. And then pull this around, taking the pressure off and coming down, right? The idea is to get this shape of pushing down, pulling around, and coming down. Okay. Come more to the center of the screen here. Okay. I am not a professional videographer, so I apologize if it seems to go off to the side. All right. Anyway, part of what I'd like to say with these videos is if whether you do rose modeling, whether you do any other art form, practice, practice, practice. Take out a piece of paper, take out a sketchbook, and I literally have a sketchbook that I have practiced in over the years. I mean, just a simple, simple, simple sketchbook. And practice, practice. The more you practice, the easier it becomes because you are developing muscle memory. Okay, so it's not going to instantly come. When you're watching my hands work, my hands have had a brush in, my, in them since I was a child doing these brush strokes. A very long time, years. All right, and those that have been in my classes know exactly. But just enjoy the process. Spend time, practice your stroke work, and have fun with it. All right, 
Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed some time back in my studio with me again. My name is Lisa. This is Rose Mulling with Art of Lisa. And I wish you all the best. Remember, it's just paint. This is not stressful. It's just paint. Enjoy the process. God is good and everyone have a blessed day. And I promise I will have a video with this guy soon. All my best. Take care.